word and we, we get worried, but we know we serve a God that's greater than anything. He's in control at all times. And uh, uh, I, that's what we're going to talk a little bit about this, this morning. We're going to talk about uh, how God is always in control. Even when things look bad, even when we think, how could possibly God possibly be in control of this situation because it's done got so bad that I tell you, there's never a time in our life that God is is not in control. I tell you, even though it looks like it might be out of control to us, but God knows exactly what He's doing. He has a purpose and He has a plan for each and every one of our lives. You know, uh, you know the, the the thing is, everyone in this room here today uh, knows the reality of hardships and suffering and crises in their lives and. You know, we've all either seen it, but most of all, uh, most of us have experienced this type of crisis and things in our life. And, uh, you know, the, the thing is, conflict is all around us in the world. I tell you, if you're alive today, you're going to face hardships. You're going to face conflicts. There's going to be trials and tribulations in your life. You know, it doesn't take long to look around and see all the, the death, the disease, the warfare, uh, all these things. These are evident. We can see them happening and we know that, hey, uh, the thing is, crisis comes on our life. Uh, you know, the, but the thing is, there's also something going on around us that's not visible to the naked eye. And that's spiritual warfare. I tell you, each and every one of us today are facing a spiritual warfare in our life. I tell you, you may not want to uh, think that you're doing that, but I tell you, you are. I, I tell you, it happens to all of us. And today we're going to be looking at Job. Uh, we're going to be looking at the life of Job. And, and most of y'all are very familiar with, with Job. We know, uh, other than our Lord Jesus Christ, uh, Job has probably suffered more than any man. As we read in the Bible, uh, we're going to read today about the story of Job, all the things that he lost. And, uh, but I tell you, the, the thing is, uh, we all are going to face times like this in our Christian life. And I, I tell you, why do we need to look at Job and the things he went through? Well, because as we see how Job handled the situation, we see the things that he faced. Maybe as we look into the Word of God and see what, see what the Word of God says, it can help us when we face uh, suffering and when we face pain uh, in our Christian life. And, you know... And the thing about it, this text that we're going to look at today, not only does it show us the trial in, in Job's life, but it also peels back the curtain a little bit on that spiritual warfare that I'm talking about because it actually shows us not only what is going on in the life of Job here on earth, but it also shows us at the same time what is taking place in heaven during all this, uh, while all this is going on in Job's life. And I, I, I tell you, Today we're going to take a look and we're going to talk a little bit about spiritual warfare and how that we might be able to grow from the story of Job to be able to face it better in our life. And uh, We're going to start a reading in chapter 1 of the book of Job and it says, uh, There was a man in the land of us whose name was Job, and the man was perfect and upright, and one that feared God and ensued evil. And there were born unto him seven sons and three daughters. His substance was uh, 7,000 sheep and, and 3,000 camel and 500 yoke of oxen and 500 she asses and a very great household so that uh, this man was the greatest of all the men of the, of the east. And his son went and, and, and feasted in their house where uh, everyone this, his day and sent and called for, for their three sisters and eat and drank with them. And it was so when the day of the feast was, was gone about that Job sent and sanctified them and, and rose up early in the morning and offered burnt offerings according to the number of them all. For Job said, I may, uh, it, it may be that my sons have sinned and cursed God in their heart. Thus did Job continually. And now there was a, a day when the Son of God came to the pre, uh, to present himself before the Lord, and Satan all, uh, came also among them. And the Lord said unto Satan, Hence cometh thou. Then Satan answered and said, uh, and said, From going to and fro in the earth, and from walking up and down it. And the Lord said unto Satan, Hath thou considered my servant Job? 
that there is none like him in the earth, a perfect and upright man, one that feareth God and ensueth evil. And Satan answered the, the Lord and, and said, Doeth Job fear God for not? Hath not thou made a, a hedge of, uh, about him and about his house and about all that he hath on every side? Thou hast blessed the, the work of, it, of his hand, and his stuff is increased in the land. But put forth thy hand now, and, and touch all that he hath, and he will curse thee to thy face. And the Lord said unto to Satan, Behold, all that he had it, uh, all that all that hath is in thy power, only upon him put not forth thy hand. So Satan went forth from the, the presence of the Lord. And there was a day when, when his son and his daughter were eating and drinking in, in their uh, elder brother's house. And there came a message unto Job and said, The oxen were plowing and the asses feeding beside them. And the, the Sabines uh, fell upon them and they, they took them away. Yea, they have slain the servants with the edge of the sword. And, and I only have escaped along with, with uh, to tell thee. While he was yet speaking, there came a, a, also another that said, The fire of God is falling from heaven, and thou hast burned up the sheep and the servants and, and consumed them. And I only am escaped along to tell thee. While he was yet speaking, there came a, another and said, The Chaldeans, May not be uh, uh, bands that fell upon the, the candles and have carried them away, yea, and slain the servants with, with the edge of the sword. And I only am escaped alone to tell thee. While he was yet speaking, there came also a, another and said, Thy sons and thy daughters were eating and drinking wine in their, their eldest brother's house. And behold, there came a, a great wind from the, from the wilderness and smote the four corners of the house, and it fell upon the, the young men, and, and they are dead. And I am escaped only to tell thee. Then Job arose and, and, and rent his, his mantle, and shaved his head, and, and fell down upon the ground, and worshipped, and, and said, Naked came I out of my mother's womb, and naked shall I return thither. And the Lord gave, and the Lord hath taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. In all this, Job sinned not, nor charged God foolishly. Let us pray. You most kind, gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank you for your love, your grace, and your mercy. Father, I just pray you to be with us this morning. And Lord, just hide me behind the cross when your word to speak. That I might glorify you in each and everything I say and do. And uh, Lord, that uh, we might bring glory to your name. We thank you, we love you, we praise you. For some bright name I pray. Amen. Amen. Uh, like I said, uh, today we're going to be looking into the life of Job. We're going to be talking a little bit about Job. First of all, uh, we see in these verses, first of all, we, we're introduced to a, a very unlikely candidate. First of all, the Bible tells us of the character of Job. You know, it tells us that Job was a man, he was a man of purity, holiness. Uh, he was a man that, that lived his life in the fear of God. You know what? During that point in time, there was not a single man that lived during the time of Job that could bring charges against Job that would stick. Job lived the, the, the godly life that God wants all of us to live. I tell you, was Job perfect? No, that's not what the Bible's saying. There's only ever been one perfect man that walked this earth, and that is our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. But in, in what Job was doing, Job did everything in his power to live a life pleasing to God. And I tell you, that's what God expects from each and every one of us as believers. But not only do we see Job's character in these verses, but we also see uh, Job's commodities. We see what Job has. You know, the Bible tells us that Job was a very wealthy man. Amen. It says that he was, a, he was the most wealthy man in the East. And I tell you, not only does it tell us that he was wealthy, it tells us why Job was wealthy. The reason Job was wealthy is because he was a godly man, and God had put his hand on Job, and he had blessed everything that Job had did. Uh, you know, he, he blessed Job, and that's why Job was wealthy. Job was under the protective hand of God, and everything that Job done, God poured out his blessings on it. You know, and I tell you, I tell you that to, to tell you this too, 
God can't bless you physically and monetarily, but I tell you, if that's all you ever get out of God, if you're missing the boat, I tell you the most, the most awesome blessings that we'll ever see, receive from God is spiritual blessings. And I tell you, but I tell you, God will bless us physically and monetarily, and we see it in the in the life of Job. But we also these verses tell us that of Job's commitment. You know, the, the, the thing is, we see in these verses, not only was Job committed to his family, uh, he was a, a great family man, but we also see that he, he was devoted to God. Even in the fact, not only was he a father to his family, but he was also a priest. We see in these scriptures that he made sacrifices for his children. Uh, uh, he offered, it, it, it was temporary atonement for their sin. I tell you, back then they sacrificed and it would... Uh, atone for their sin. It was rolling all those sins over until Jesus came and died on the cross and paid for all sin for all eternity. But not only did we see that Job was committed, but we also see that Job was consistent in his life. You know, the, the thing is, Job was not one of those those Sabbath day Christians. He wasn't one of those that, that live one way on Sunday and, and Wednesday and, and live like the, the world the rest of the week. I tell you, the Bible tells us that, that he sought God each and every day of his life. It said that he, had, he had eschewed evil. He tried to live a holy life to all of his capability. He tried to refrain from sin in his life. And I, I tell you, Job was consistent in that. The Bible tells us that Job was an a upright, righteous man. And I, I tell you, that's what God expects from every believer. He expects us all to live that type of life. But not only do we see that, we also, as we look at Job, we see some other things. You know, the thing is, Job, oh, excuse me, Job was one of the most unlikely uh, people, uh, candidates to, to suffer uh, trials and tribulations and suffering. You know, most people live under the ideal that if you're a Christian, you only suffer trials and tribulations in your life when you do something wrong, when you've sinned against God. See, Job's wife, if you read later on in chapter 2, Job's wife and Job's friend, they were under the same assumption. They thought, hey, undoubtedly Job must have brought this on himself. Job must have done something. He must have sinned against God. But I tell you, the thing is, we do know that when we sin against God, there are consequences. I tell you, a lot of things that come into our life is because we sin against God. Uh, we make bad decisions, bad choices in, choices in life. And I tell you, it brings uh, reproach and it, it brings uh, uh, suffering into our life. And sometimes it's not things that we do. Sometimes it's because of what others do. I mean, because of other people's sin, I tell you, we get involved in that, and I tell you, it brings uh, suffering and pain into our life. But I, I tell you, the, the thing is, we have to uh, come to understand, but there's also times in our life that, that, that God brings suffering into our life. See, and you say, well, man, that sounds... That sounds kind of rough. But I tell you, see, the thing is, God is not doing this to hurt you. God is not doing this to bring pain into your life. God is doing this to grow you and to make you grow in your Christian life. I tell you, we see this in the in the book of Job. You know, the, the, the thing is, we suffer all this. Why? To bring glory to God's name. I tell you, that's why Job is suffering what he's suffering in the Bible here. It's because it, uh, it is to bring glory to God's name. See, think about this. You know, the tallest tree in the woods is the tree most likely to get struck by lightning. You ever thought about that? And the thing is, when you live a life like Job was living, a life that stood out from all the other people, a life that was lived for God, and I tell you, when the devil sees these things, I tell you, the devil wants to get on the attack. Why? Because he wants to steal that glory from God. See, the thing is, the devil hates everything about God. He wants to steal all the glory from God. He wants to be God, but I tell you, he will never be. We know that he is trying to steal the glory from God. See, what's going on in Job's life is not about Job's wealth. It's not about Job's family. It's all about the devil trying to steal the glory for God out of Job's life. And I, I tell you, that's what he's doing in our life. He wants to steal all the joy out of our life that we have for God. But we also 
see in, the, in these verses that we also see an unseen conflict. You know, as Joe is living on earth, there's something going on in heaven. You know, Joe, he, he couldn't see what was going on. He, he couldn't tell. He didn't, he didn't have this information. And I tell you, that same conflict is going on in heaven today. Amen. That's what we have to understand. See, the, the thing that I want to take a look at what's going on. First of all, we see a heavenly assembly. We see that these angelic beings are coming in. What are they doing in heaven? They're coming before the throne of God and, and they're giving, uh, they're answering of their service. God wants to know what they've been doing and they're giving an answer for the service that they've been doing. And we understand all these angelic beings coming before the throne of God. They all answer to God. But I tell you, sometimes we wonder, why is the devil show up? Why does Satan show up at, at the throne of God? You know, the Bible tells us that, that God doesn't, can't even look upon sin and evil. But I tell you, here we are in Scripture that the, the devil is standing before the throne of God. I tell you, there's things going on here in the Bible that we don't understand. We don't have the answers to right now. And we won't know these things until we stand before an Almighty God with a perfect understanding. But I do, I do know this. Every single thing that's here on earth or in heaven are under the control of God. They have to answer to the sovereign power of God. See, the thing is, the devil is restrained by the, by the power of God. See, the thing is, what we have to understand, if God was to remove that restraint from the devil, we, as bad as we see things are here on earth now, Amen. you don't truly know what it would be like until if God removed that strength, restraint from the devil. And I tell you, we're going to see it later on in the end times through the tribulation periods and, and, and when God released the devil that last time, I tell you, it removes the restraint. We're going to see what that's all about. But I, I tell you right now, we have to understand, even the devil has to answer to an almighty God. He's under the hand of a, the sovereign power of God. Well, we also see in these verses a heavenly acknowledgement. You know, as, as he stands before God, he begins to speak and he begins to make accusations. But if you notice, the devil doesn't speak until God speaks to him. See, we, we see who's in charge of all this. And once he starts to speak, what does he do? He starts making accusations against uh, Job, God's man. And I tell you, you know, he's living up to, the, the devil's living up to his name. You know, the Satan means an adversary or one who stands in opposition to another. You know, I tell you, the thing is, we see this, what he's doing here in heaven. He's making accusations about Job. He said, that old Job, he ain't all you think he is, I tell you. Uh, you might think he's this or that, but I tell you, if you take your hand off Job, the only reason he's worshiping you is because you got that hedge of protection around him. And I tell you, you bless in every single thing that he does. And I tell you, if you, you remove all of that, I tell you, Job will curse your name. And I, I tell you, we see that, that he's making accusations here. But I tell you, you know, he didn't quit with Job. See, the thing is, he's still doing the same thing today. See, the devil still has access to the throne of God today. And I tell you, he's accusing us today, God's children. You know, the Bible tells us that, that he's the accuser of the brethren in Revelation. I tell you, every single one of you, he's going before the throne of God and he's saying, that old Scotty, uh, he's not what you think he is, uh, God. He's, he, he, he's bad. He, he's evil. But I tell you, we have something today uh, that, you know, even though he's up there making these accusations today, we have an advocate at the throne of God. I tell you, when Jesus came and died on the cross, he purchased us. I tell you, when we believed in faith, that sin, uh, when he died for our sins, his blood was shed. He purchased us. We are his. And I tell you, now when the devil comes before the throne of God and he said, hey, that old Scotty, I, I tell you, he's not all that you think he is, but I tell you today, I got an advocate there. The, the Lord Jesus Christ, my Lord and Savior, he says, oh, but I tell you, that Scotty, he's one of mine. He was bought and paid for on the cross of Calvary. I shed my blood for him and he come to me in faith and he accepted me as Lord and Savior. I tell you, he's one of mine and I tell you, there's nothing you can do to change that. I tell you, I'm, I'm thankful today that we, we, we got that advocate in heaven that when the devil comes before the throne of God and he makes accusations, I tell you, we got somebody there that stands for us and defends us and that's our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. But I also, in these verses, I, I tell you, we, we see that the, the 
the relinquished control here in these verses. You know, the, the thing is, a lot of people have a hard time understanding these verses. They say, well, if God is in control, how can He let all these bad things happen? You know, that's what a lot of people, when they look at this, they say, if God was in control, how did He let Job's family die? How did He let Job lose everything? How did He let Job's health deteriorate? How, why, why did He let all these things happen? You know, I tell you, we don't understand pain and suffering. But I will tell you this. God is in control of all things. There's a purpose for each and every thing. See, everything that comes into our life, it may not be pleasant. It, it may not be something we enjoy. But all of that is part of God's plan for our life. Right. See, God is taking what the devil does. He can take that and He can use it for His glory. We have to understand that. God is sovereign. God is, is in control of all times. If you look back at this this this. Uh, this account of, of the devil standing before the throne of God, we see that in all of this, God was the instigator, uh, God, God was the inhibitor. Uh, even though he instigated, he said, take a look at my, my man Job. Uh, this is a good man. He's a faithful servant. And I tell you, he instigated it. But I tell you, in all that, he also restrained the devil. I tell you, he said, hey, you can do whatever you want, but don't put your hands on Job. You can't take Job's life, is what he said. Hey, you can do whatever. And we don't understand that, but I tell you, the devil is out there trying to destroy everything that we have in life. He is trying to get us to, to turn against God. He is trying to steal God's glory. But I tell you, God is still in control. I tell you, it ought to give us comfort to know that when we go through these trials in our life, no matter how hard it seems what we're facing, it ought to give us comfort to know that God is in control and He has your best interest at heart. I tell you, God is working these things out for good for those who love God. I tell you, He's working. He's putting all this bad and good together and He's mixing it up. It's kind of like that, you know, you heard that thing about cake mix. Every single ingredient to make a cake tastes horrible by itself, but when you put it together and you, you blend it all up, I tell you, it makes a pretty good tasty cake. Uh, but the thing is, that's what God is doing. All these things come into our life. God blends all them up and He works it for His glory. I tell you, we ought to be thankful that, that God is in control. You know, I hear people all the time talk about, well, uh, I got unlucky. Well, I, I made a mistake. Oh, I had an accident. But I tell you, if you believe that God is in control of your life and everything that comes into your life, there's no such thing as an accident. There's no such thing uh, as luck. You know, I, I tell people all the time, I don't believe in luck. I believe every single thing that comes into my life is ordained by God, whether good or bad. I can affect some of that by the decisions I make in my life. I can make bad decisions and I can bring uh, bad things in my life or I can make good godly decisions and bring godly things. But even outside of that, there's going to be times in my life when suffering and pain come in. And I tell you, God allows this, but it's, it's to grow me to be more like Christ. I, I tell you, that's the whole purpose of this in our life. But we also see in this story an unfazed commitment. You know, even after Job faced everything he faced, he lost his family. He lost his wealth. He lost his health. Job lost everything here on earth that he had. But you know, even as we see Job doing all that, we see that Job still had a testimony for God. Amen. See, Job didn't let the devil rob him of him giving glory to God. See, Job understood that God was God in the good times and God was God in the bad times. And I tell you, that's what we need to understand today in our Christian life. You know, we see so many times today when, when hard times come on, on believers, I tell you, they get mad, they, they get angry with God, and they want to sit down and they want to quit on God. But I tell you, that's not what God expects out of us. I tell you, God is in control at all times. We need to learn to see God working behind the scenes. Even when there's pain and suffering involved in our life, we need to understand that God is using that for His purpose and His glory to grow us. You know, we can see this in the reaction of Job. You know, the first thing Job does, we can pretty much we expect it. The Bible tells us that Job shaved his beard, his head, and gripped his garment. 
You know, that was a sign of, 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 of mourning. I mean, he was upset. He was mourning. And, you know, that's we understand that. I tell you, we lose a loved one and, and all these things going on in our life. We do the same thing. The first thing we do, we're born, we mourn. We mourn. There's nothing wrong with that. But I tell you, what's surprising is the second thing that Job did. See, we can understand the ripping of the clothes, the shaking of the head, the falling to your knees. We can understand all that mourning. But I tell you, when he hit his knees, he did something that we didn't expect. He worshiped God. Amen. You know, even though all these things had happened in Job's life, we tell you, he still worshiped God for who God was, and he knew that God had all authority in his life. I tell you, that's where we need to be as God's children today. We need to quit worrying about all the things going on in our life and come to understand that God is in control of all things. And I tell you, we need to bow to His sovereign power in our life. And I tell you, if you do that, I tell you, you'll be able to face the things like Job would face. You know, if I had to face what Job faced there, I'd fall off pieces. I, I hate to say it, I would. But I tell you, we can be just like Job. We can stand strong in the face of all that pain and suffering if we are in the right place with our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. I don't know where you're at today. I, I don't know what you're facing in life today. But I tell you, life has a way of throwing some very hard things at us. It's a lot of pain and a lot of suffering out there. But I tell you, if you'll turn to the Lord Jesus Christ, He's in control of all those things. Amen. He can ease that pain. He can ease that suffering if you'll let Him. Let us pray. You most kind, gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, as our song leader and piano player come today, I, I just pray you just be with us in, in this, this invitation, Father. I don't know the need today, but Lord, you do. If there's someone here today that don't know you as Lord and Savior, uh, they don't know uh, what you've done for them on the cross of Calvary today. I, I pray that they step out today in faith and receive you as Lord and Savior. Uh, Lord, maybe there's some people here today that are going through some very difficult times in their life, Father. I don't know the need, but you do. I just pray today that they would see that you're in control of all things, Father. And I just pray that they would just turn it over to you and let you uh, just handle things, Lord, and to seek your will in their life. I thank you. I love you and I praise you. Surprise, I'm praying. Let us thank you, man.